You're listening to On The Verge on WTBU. BU's only music and talk show bringing you the latest in campus life, entertainment news, and trending topics worldwide. With stories from Verge Campus and new music from Good Music All Day. Everything you want to hear. Minus what you don't. Every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Don't let this be our final song. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break from this lovely trip what down a good memory note lane. To end on. <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly sure what just happened. I was on the phone. And the reason I was on the phone is because our featured artist of the episode has called in, and we're going to do an interview. And I'm really excited about it. Not excited. So. Let us get our caller on the air. Hello, can you hear us? I can hear you. Awesome. You are officially on the air. Would you like to give yourself? (laughs) No, this is exciting. Would you like to give yourself a quick introduction for our viewers? All right. Wait a minute. It's me give the introduction or you give the introduction? I think you should do it. I think you know oh yourself gosh. better than Here I know are. you. <laughs> Hello, East Coast listeners. Uh, uh, I'm calling it. I'm the lead singer, uh, Ethan Thompson, of Ocean Park Stand Up. And I'm excited you guys are playing our song again. So good news, for us to We got two of out right now. We got a, uh, a couple more coming out in January, and uh, we're excited to be on the air right now with you guys. We're excited to have you. Uh, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm Angie, right. aka DJ A Rad. I'm Milu, um, DJ uh, DJ Looney Tunes. <laughs> I'm Kanal. Uh, am I DJ Theater Thug? No. Yeah, yeah. You are. I'm DJ Theater Thug. <laughs> I'm Latifa, but I'm DJ Ladybug. I'm Kaylin, oh. and I'm DJ Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the On the Verge fam, and Sorry. we're excited to have you. So. First and foremost, I was doing a little digging on Ocean Park Standoff when I found out we were getting this interview, which made me super excited. So excited. And of course, I had to go ahead and lurk your Facebook page. And all your bio says is bulldogs and toothpicks. Um, (laughs) Would would you care to elaborate on that and possibly give us a bit more about your group? Yeah, yeah. The reason why it's uh, bulldogs and toothpicks is actually uh, uh, we... We do all of our recording out of um, Samantha's, uh, one of the members of the band's houses. She's got a h- home studio in the back of her house. And sh- I think she was the one that actually made our uh, made our bios on those pages. Bulldogs and Toothpicks, she's got two English Bulldogs who we adore and do to death. And actually, she used to smoke, and now she uh, doesn't anymore. And so she always has toothpicks. That's her, uh, that's her now go-to. Uh, when we all we all uh, take turns with the toothpicks too, because we have tons of them. She's got all these different flavors, all these different assortments. So ah. that's why uh, that's why the balance bulldogs and toothpicks because it's something that we're around pretty much every day. I like that. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. To elaborate, we are uh, there's there's three of us. It's Pete Nappy, uh, myself, Ethan Thompson, and then Samantha Ronson. Uh, and we're a project that came together about a year and a half ago. Uh, we were all doing uh, all doing various projects at the time, but we came together and we started writing together uh, just because we had the uh, joint belief that we wanted to write stuff that uh, only uh, only we wanted to sing. We were all writing stuff for the pitching game and doing the songwriting stuff uh, all through L.A., and we wanted to write something that uh, we didn't think anyone else was going to sing. We just wanted to do it for fun, and then that's how the whole band and project started. Very cool. Yeah, I would definitely say that you guys are probably the most... Um unique band I've come across in a while. I, I really like both your sound and kind of I guess I want to use the word aesthetic. Yes. That Hashtag. overused that overused word nowadays. Um, but just like how you guys present yourself on your social media. Your website is super cool. Um, you definitely oh, have you. Yeah, you definitely have like an interesting brand going on. So what word would you use to describe that? Uh, I guess the number one word I'd use to describe is free. Because we were all, uh, like I said, we were all kind of uh, in the shackles of the music industry for a long time. Love it. Love the whole grind. Love the whole part of it. And this project for us was uh, really just digging into um, not being tied down by any of the uh, stipulations that are made by the music industry. 
it was uh, our freedom to finally go out and just make music that we wanted to do. I love that. That's awesome. So how, I know you kind of touched on having like a similar vision and that's what brought you guys together, but how did you guys all meet? Um, and when did you decide that you would work well together as a group? Yeah, so me and Pete have known each other for a while now. We actually met when I first moved to L.A., which is about three years ago now. Uh, we met through uh, through his publisher, actually, because I was friends with her, and she introduced us. So we started riding together and bringing each other into every – we, we kind of clicked right away, and we started bringing each other into every session we were doing. If we could, any session we could, we tried to work together. And uh, Pete and Samantha are working together because they got set up, and we're writing, and they were loving each other. And uh, then uh, Pete suggested bringing me in after they'd been working together for a little bit. So then I came in, and it was actually, uh, we came in, and we were talking about, you know, who we're going to write these songs for, what should we be doing, and it was Samantha who was like, you know, we should just be doing this for ourselves. Like, let's just, let's write, you know, I, we write all these songs for all these other people. You know, let's have fun. Let's have fun working together and, and, uh, and write some songs. And it was actually after the second song, uh, we were all really feeling each other and having such a good time that Samantha suggested, hey, do you want to make this a new project and put it out? And initially, we were just going to make five songs and put it out on SoundCloud. And then uh, we uh, made a playlist of the songs just for ourselves and ended up, uh, Samantha ended up giving it to one of her friends and it ended up getting uh, handed off to a label through very random events that I won't bore you with the details. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, we decided we wanted to be a project and then it uh, ended up getting picked up by a label because they heard the songs and they uh, were very excited about them, which we had no idea that we were going to make it anything special at the time. We just knew that we loved hanging out and we loved writing together. And it was a big old like therapy session for us to write together all the time. We really all cared about each other. Uh, and then after after uh, our label heard it and was really excited about it, that was when we really dug in and then we started figuring out our live show. And uh, that's pretty much how the whole project started. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a very rapid... Um transformation yeah fruition like, oh yeah it was crazy you know we were just three people having fun writing music we just thought we were going to put it out online and no one would really ever care and then uh now it's turned into a whole uh whole movement which we were really stoked on definitely so you all were doing songwriting for other artists before this yeah okay mm -hmm. so how did you get into that uh that was just when i first came out to la it was i mean all of us all of us moved out to uh, L.A. with the intention of, you know, being in the music industry and doing music stuff. I was doing my solo project, uh, and uh, and uh, Pete and I were doing the writing game. It was just something where we're all very passionate about writing, and uh, especially with me when I was doing my solo stuff, I always wanted to be the artist that would write my own music when I came out. So when I came out to L.A., my number one goal was just to become the best writer I possibly could, so that's why we were just throwing ourselves into session every day is, uh, and writing as many songs as we could of all time. But then it, uh, eventually we started getting to the circuit and started writing with uh, more well-known writers, you know, getting from the B -list, C list to the B list and working our way up, the whole writing game. Uh, and then it eventually ended up turning into one of our strongest projects. So it was cool. Yeah. So the songs that you wrote before for other people, are they similar mm -hmm. to the type of music that you put out now? Or is your sound... Um, Has it evolved for, Yeah. Um, it's definitely evolved, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a mixture of, that's the thing that's kind of fun about what we're doing with this project, is it's a mixture of uh, uh, little parts of each of us, and it's a mixture of all the different things that we love, you know, we're a big fan of, uh, uh, there's a big 90s hip-hop influence, there's a big uh, 80s influence, because Sam's got all these different analog uh, instruments and keyboards in her house that we were fortunate enough to be able to play with. Uh, and then it's a, it's a combination of, uh, you know, Pete is the one that's making a lot of the production. We, we all work on it together, but Pete's kind of the spearhead of the sound when we're going into it. And uh, it's kind of just day to day. We're not really, hey, let's make something that sounds like this. Hey, let's make something that sounds like that. It's really just what are we feeling today? And we won't stop working on it until we think that it feels good. And that's mainly the main push for the music we're doing is does it feel good? Does it feel right? It's not, does it sound like this? Does it sound like that? It's just, hey, does this feel good? And uh, I feel like being, you know, raised in the generation that we were, where we have access to so much music, there's just so much influence from across the board. You know, we listen to classical music. We are we just came out for uh, Pete's uh, brother's bachelor party out to Vegas, and the whole way out here we were listening to Frank Sinatra just because it came on the radio and we're all big fans. So, you know, it, it's really there's a, a mixture of all different kinds of music that we're trying to, uh, trying to really put into one, and each song kind of has its own character and own personality that uh, then adds to the whole project. Yeah, so do you ever pull influences um, from other artists when you do songwriting or strictly sound? 
Um, so, pardon me, ask me one more time. <laughs> um, I know a lot of artists um, feel like they have influencers when it comes to putting their sound together, but do you feel like artists that you're fans of ever influence your songwriting process? I feel like lyrically they definitely do. We we want our, we want to want our, all of our songs to be stories and as real as possible. We're we're trying to pull from our lives as much as possible. We're always uh, we're always having uh, like I was saying earlier, giant like therapy sessions before we start saying, hey, what's going on, and talking about uh, you know very uh, specific parts of our lives, and then we're trying to infuse that into our music just because we want it to be as real as possible. Mm-hmm. And as far as the sound goes. Uh, totally with you. It comes from, uh, you know, every day it's, it's different who's influencing us, you know, because we're listening to something different every day. Um, so then that's how the sound comes together. Yeah, definitely. So do you think that you can pinpoint your music to a certain genre, or do you kind of steer clear from doing that? No, we, we try and steer clear. It's one, of the, it's one of the joys of doing it, you know. Like, I'm a, I'm a singer-songwriter at the root. Samantha's a DJ, and he's totally into uh, all these all these different influences across the board. So it it, it makes the show really unique too, and, and a lot of fun. It, and has and has an energy that I never expected uh, would especially come out of me when we're performing. But we we are, uh, we get kind of supercharged when the three of us are together, and we get this do uh, we get this uh, vibe that I've never felt before, and we get a genre that you know I don't know if I can specifically define it because from song to song we uh, we jump from uh, what we're currently feeling, you know, what we're currently in the mood and when we're creating it. Yeah, no, I definitely think that gives artists more opportunity to, like, grow and expand their fan base if they don't, like, strictly define themselves as one type of group or another. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I think that's awesome. So how would you describe oh, you. <laughs> How would you describe uh, your shows? Are you guys doing, like, production and instruments live or do you bring in like pre-recorded things and then also sing and, and do instruments live uh, it's the exact same thing with our live show that we've been lucky enough to be able to uh, develop the way that we do it, it feels like a band when we're playing it uh, we're all playing instruments you know Samantha plays keys and guitar I play acoustic and keys and then Pete's playing drums and we got our bass player and we're able to cover pretty much uh, all of what we create in the music there's a couple things Pete such a genius producer uh not to toot his horn because I don't want to make him feel good about himself, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he's able to create these sounds, uh, these especially unique sounds, like, uh, for instance, on uh, Good News, there's this vocal loop that you can hear at the beginning, and what that is is we were literally just talking. He happened to have the microphone on, then he was able to, uh, and however the way his weird mind works, he was able to make it into a uh, make it into an actual sound and an actual loop and something that we were able to put in music, and that's something that we have cued that we turn on during the songs. You know, there's, there's some things that he does that we cannot recreate live unless we uh, are triggering them ourselves. So I have them set up through my keyboard where I can actually be triggering the sounds. But, uh, so the way it's, it's, a, it's just like the, the, the genres we're doing are kind of mixed up and uh, it's their own thing when we're doing our live show. It's kind of a, a unique way, at least that I've put those together. Um, but we're mixing, uh, you know, the stuff that Pete does with just a genuine live sound. Yeah, definitely. That sounds awesome. So what experience really are you trying to give your fans? Like, what do you hope your fans, when they walk out of a show, say? I mean, our main thing that we're always talking about is an experience. You know, we're out here, <laughs> we're out here uh, in uh, Vegas right now, and last night we went to a Diplo concert, and we, uh, we're out here in it. And, you know, when you go into that concert, you, you totally forget about what's going on in the outside world. You're totally just in that moment with everyone in that room and that's exactly what we're trying to do in our shows we're trying to get everyone together everyone in the moment you know pray that we can get everyone to put their cell phones away and just forget about the outside world just just for the time that we're there at the show and that we can live in this experience and moment together and that's one thing that we're definitely trying to bring to our shows is just an experience as much as we can and we're and we're uh biting a little bit from the dj world where the way that we do our lights a little bit more dj driven and then the way that we're uh presenting our music is totally like an old rock band would do it the way that we're playing it uh, so uh, we're fortunate enough that in today's days and times you can you can mix and match a lot of things you're doing live. So, but our main goal is just to make it an experience where we escape because that's how I feel when I'm performing it, uh, and that's what we want to do for the listeners that are in the show too. Yeah, no, I think that you offer your fans like a multifaceted experience. Kind of going back to what I said earlier about like your social media presence and your site. Um, you mentioned your song "Good News," and I saw on your website you have like this little icon of a tv that says click here for good news and then it's just a, yeah. kind of like a blog of positive news articles um so i thought yeah. that was really interesting who thought oh, of that you. that thing is so that thing is so hard 
because we have to filter through all that stuff. So we're going through and making sure there's nothing messed up on there all the time. It's harder than it looks, but it's fun. <laughs> oh, so do you have like p- users contributing to that or is it you guys posting it? Oh, yeah, no, it's all users. We just have hashtag good news and we have it actually running through our site. Uh, oh, hashtag good news. Okay. Going on. Yeah. So we try to make sure because there's sometimes people hashtag good news and it's not good news and it's something horrible. <laughs> so we, have to, we have to go through and make sure it's not on our site. We've caught some a couple of different funny things that I won't repeat. But, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. we're constantly monitoring it. Okay, that's, I think that's even cooler to me. And then you're really like giving an opportunity for fans to get involved and contribute to your platform like in their own way. Um, so ca- whose idea was that and what were you kind of hoping to achieve? I mean, it was kind of a, it was kind of a collective thought. We were bouncing around with a couple different people because whenever we're doing the social media stuff, I'll be the first one to admit, social media is so beyond me. I'm a kid from Montana. I'm from the woods. So you know, <laughs> even, I, I wasn't really even on Facebook until like a ridiculously long time where I, I especially with doing music that I should have been on there. I just, I just didn't get it. It was totally foreign to me. So we bounced it around. Uh, we bounced it around with a couple different people. Samantha is more into uh, social than we are. And I believe that was uh, one of her ideas to come up with was the, uh, was having this chain of, you know, good news coming through, uh, as much as we can, you know, if it's the, the initial, the initial token of the song, and it's something that we've been trying to, you know, steer clear of as much, since it is called good news, and there's all these things going on, you know, with, with politics and, just, and the world, that's always on the news, we, we wrote that song initially just because it was, uh, our own personal escape, and we had so many things going on personally in our lives right then, that, that weren't, uh, we'll say we weren't, weren't cool, that we were uh, just writing that we needed something good. We needed something to help us carry uh, carry on and move forward just because of all these different things that we were going through. Uh, and and the idea with the website was to do the same thing with people. It's like, hey, we just want to have a positive outlook. Because if we looked online, I checked online, I'd say, I want to find only good news. And there was a couple websites, but they were generally all things not used, which is so funny because as humans, we're naturally drawn to the disasters and all the bad things in the world. And we're trying to, uh, with the website idea, it was trying to make something that was more of like a uh, beacon of hope, you know, and nothing nothing too intense. We just wanted just good news. Like, hey, you know, my coffee tasted great this morning. You know, hey, my, uh, you know, my mom survived cancer. You know, anything across the board we've been getting and we like just posting all in there, big and small, and just, you know, small, the big, good things that are happening in people's lives. Yeah, no, I love that message. I think music is often what people turn to when they're going through something hard and, and feeling kind of down so it's cool that you not only offer them the music that'll make them feel better but just kind of like this general community that they can be part of I think that's really awesome um and just something that we've been talking to a lot of our artists on air about because we tend to just talk to people who are students or very like up and coming mainly on SoundCloud um and this market can be like so saturated sometimes when it comes to trying to build um a career off of the internet internet and i know you guys are already rocking and rolling and you have uh your label now but uh yeah. what do you think are still kind of the challenges that you face in terms of just getting more exposure i mean the, the, the biggest challenge for me has always been this you know i was always anti-label when it came to doing my own music because i didn't want it to be controlled by this that and the other thing and whenever you Whenever I heard of a band that you know is on a label, you know I, I, I thought of it as you know oh it's dishonest. They have people writing for them. Uh, so one thing that's been honestly the, the the thing that has been personally hardest for me is uh, to the fans that the label for us they are lovely, the best people I've I've uh, had the chance of working with. It's been absolutely amazing. And to me, the label uh, how they've acted with us they're they're actually just our first fans. They've been the people that have been believing in us and they're uh, and they're really pushing for us to go forward and it's really cool because they let us just do whatever we want creatively uh you know we're right we're the ones writing all the songs which is uh, a rare opportunity to be on a label and just and they're giving us completely creative control but it's great because they, they literally are our first fans that they just happen to discover us first and uh pull us out of our uh, writing chambers that we were in and say no this is something that's real and you guys are doing something that's real and we think that it uh, could be something to move forward so my biggest thing has just been how to connect with people uh, and real people, you know, and, and put a real message for it, uh, you know, even being on a label, because everyone, you know, it's, it's a big, dark thing for whatever reason to be on a label nowadays with that. People here signed to this, down the other thing. My biggest thing is I just want to say, hey, you know, we're real, we're out here, we were people that were, uh, you know, in the streets, totally broke, uh, making music for uh, a while, you know, trying, trying to uh, make something real, and now we actually have the opportunity to do it, and I just want to connect to fans and people uh, at the most basic level, which is, you know, through social media and 
uh, through a genuine uh, human experience that I just want to connect with people at. And that's, that's the hardest thing is, you know, doing that because everything's online nowadays. So when we get the opportunity to do shows, you know, we get anywhere from 50 to, you know, eight people there. I could really care less as long as there's someone new there and we're meeting someone new and we're getting to learn their story and incorporate it into our story. And uh, that's the biggest thing for me is just brick by brick, fan by fan. We love going out and meeting them. Yeah, I know. And I think people definitely pick up on that authenticity um, when they're finding oh, new you. groups. Yeah. Um, like, you only have two songs out now, right, on SoundCloud and Spotify? Yeah. Um, but still, you already have, like, thousands of listeners. Um, yeah. And it's only been a month, I want to say a month, that your songs have been out? Yeah, it's been crazy. We, it's been watching Spotify and uh, Apple Music, it's been crazy seeing the amount of uh, lists, the playlists they keep getting put on it. It's mind-blowing. I, I didn't really understand all that stuff works, but I'm figuring it out now. And it's just people putting our songs on their, on their personal playlist, and it, it's really cool to watch. Um, so, yeah, I actually want to quickly ask, so how does it feel to be on the Czech Republic Viral 50? I think that's so random but so cool that you ended up on a, the Man. top <laughs> playlist for yeah. the Czech Republic. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. It also went, like, number two in Zimbabwe, and I'm like, hey, oh, wow. out Zimbabwe. We got the people out there. <laughs> hey, sometimes um, you have to build everywhere else in the world, and then you you just crush it here in the U.S. Yeah, we had that artist yeah, last it was week crazy. who did the same thing. Yeah. Yep. The, this rapper yeah, we, we had on air last week um, was, like, huge in Amsterdam, <laughs> but is still, like, <laughs> figuring oh, his way you. out here. Pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I have no idea how I got to any of those lists, and, and, you know, but it's, it's the fact that people are listening and people that, uh, you know, I, I've only been to Czech Republic one time, and I was out there doing with a DJ doing that, uh, singing with them, so it's, it's really cool to see that we're connecting with people um, in all different areas of the world, you know, not just the U.S., not just the U.K., uh, and the fact that we uh, made number two in Zimbabwe and number one in Czech Republic is just mind-boggling. That's how the world is nowadays. You know, we just essentially with the label because we we didn't want to push anything uh, to radio. We were like, we want to we want to build this movement ourselves. It's just been really cool. So we've been doing the grassroots approach of literally going out and like putting our stickers across uh, you know all different areas of the town and, and trying to pick it up kind of the, the more old-fashioned way. But now we have to push it anywhere. So the fact that in the Czech Re- we put online the Czech Republic got a hold of it it's just mind-blowing and uh, honoring i was i was really stoked and excited and uh if any czech listeners are listening let's do it we're coming out <laughs> yeah awesome. I, I think that really speaks to how music is totally borderless and kind of transcends yeah. languages and cultures so yeah i got a quick question like you you've been in la out there for uh like three years and i'm like the music industry industry has been changing so much over the past couple of years. Like, what do you think is like different now versus when you showed up in LA for you personally? For me personally, it's just ignoring the noise. You know, you get a thousand and one opinions, and none of them are right and none of them are wrong when you come down to music. The only opinion that's important is, uh, you know, especially with the band, is that I found out is ours. You know, even when we send our music to someone, you know, someone doesn't like one of our songs, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad song. And if someone says it's a great song, doesn't mean it's a great song. And if someone says you think it differently, it doesn't mean you should listen. You know, there's so much pressure uh, when you're in L.A. to do something a certain way. And with the band, that's why I really like that word we brought up earlier, free. Uh, you know, it was our chance to kind of uh, rid ourselves of those, of those thoughts and opinions and really do what we want to do without being afraid of, uh, of you know, what people are going to think and without being afraid of uh, who's judging us. Because in L.A., it's, there's so much... Uh, pressure on writing certain types of music that this project for me the, and the mindset is that just do what you want enjoy it and love every second of it and, uh, that's what we've been able to do yeah and i'm i have to ask how big of a culture shock was it for you moving from montana to, to california uh it's always been if i could live in montana no offense to la i love living in la and i love that uh what i do there but uh, if I could live in Montana, I'm a total wooden mountain boy to the core. I can't, I can't lie. I can't paint it the other way. <laughs> um, but LA, LA is great, and uh, definitely uh, the first time I went out to LA was when I was 19. I just came out and visited for a week, and it was one of the best things because being in Whitefish, uh, Montana. Shout out to my hometown, favorite place on planet Earth. I love, I love being there. But the thing that's so beautiful about LA is such a melting pot for cultures. Uh, that I was, I'm was, i so excited when I meet someone new and someone from a different part of the world, and that's definitely my favorite part of, uh, of L.A., is that there's just this really big melting pot where people are clashing and coming together from all across the world, and you get, a, you get to experience all these different cultures in such a small area. So it's, it's really nice to be now in L.A. 
I've heard that it can also be pretty competitive over there just because there are so many people kind of striving to achieve the same thing. Have you experienced that or do you think it's more so of a supportive community? It's totally competitive, but that's one thing that's changed since we started doing the band is it's really been, you know, I'm, I, it, it is very supporting. Uh, everyone really uh, looks after each other, especially when you believe in each other. Uh, you know, I, you, you notice that you, we get these little teams of people, you know, other bands that we're hanging out with uh, on, a, on a daily basis because we have kind of the same visions of uh, how we want to make people feel when, we're com- when they're coming to our shows. And, you know, then you have the same people on creative end who are doing film and people who are doing uh, artwork that we're getting that. You become these little support groups for each other, and it's so fun because we're all at like this level where no one knows really who we are. Really gives, gives oh, I almost cursed or cares. <laughs> uh, and we and we, uh, you know, we're all we're all discovering each other out there, and it's it, it definitely I feel like is uh, competitive, but the competitiveness is definitely in a supportive way. We're all out there advocating for each other, and we're all pushing for uh, for us to get to a higher level of uh, understanding in, in music at all times. So it's it's, it's cool. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to make a quick transition from music. Um, So (laughs) on On The Verge, we are like our pretty much our mission with this show and our brand Verge Campus BU is to be a voice for college students. Um, So we have a little segment we like to call just college things. And this episode, Uh we're being totally ridiculous. Um, oh, just geez, trying to I'm be nervous. positive <laughs> in light of recent <laughs> events this week. Um, yeah. So we decided to throw it back and have a segment about being 90s kids. And we were before you called, we were just talking about our favorite childhood movies and TV shows. Um, yeah. So what's one of yours and what is a life lesson that you got from it? My favorite movie of all time is my family's movie. Every time I go home, we watch it. Broadway play. In the nose, please, because I'm poor. I just bought some, you know, tickets to the forest play. But it's Lion King, my favorite movie of all time. And, uh, Great actually, choice. It's yeah, it's actually funny. My earbuds, my in-ears that I wear when we're uh, playing live, uh, the monitors actually have a, the, uh, the Rafiki draw Simba on the tree. You guys remember that, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what the that's what the uh, symbol is on my uh, in-ears. And I made that because it's remember who you are, and that was my uh, that was uh, my favorite thing that I pulled about, and something that's really been. Uh, helpful especially when you're in LA with all these influences and all these pressures and uh, things surrounding you just remember who you are and stay true to yourself so uh, definitely one of the my favorite movies and one of the most valuable things I think a lot of us can learn I love that his answer was so poetic and we were talking about like I don't even know Drake and Josh <laughs> earlier <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man, awesome I've been listening. <laughs> no stay tuned we we've got some more Disney Channel, Nickelodeon related topics coming up. So, All right. <laughs> um, so our final thing that we like to do with our interviewees on On the Verge is have them fill in the blank for us. So hashtag On the Verge of blank. Uh, hashtag On the Verge. Of, I don't know what day is today. Sunday. We're hashtag On the Verge of Sunday. It's eight a.m. on the East Coast right now, and I am on the shuttle bus with everyone else who is in Vegas right now. <clears throat> So uh, hashtag, hashtag, uh, we're going to stay on the verge of a Sunday here. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you so much for waking up early. I'm sorry. I can only imagine how difficult oh, no. that, Man, that was. Uh, yeah, anytime. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank you so much for having me. The pleasure has been all ours. For our On The Verge listeners, this has been our exclusive interview with Ethan Thompas- Thompson, the lead singer of Ocean Park Stand Up. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day. You yeah, too. You too. Take care, Ethan. Bye. 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 Alrighty, guys. How about we have a little music break? We will play some Ocean Park standoff, and then we will be back with more '90s kids topics. Sound good in the hood? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 